How are we doing, you wonderful people? My name is Jay, and welcome back to another episode of Chilling with the Amis podcast. Now, before we get into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell. That way you guys will receive all the channel notifications and you can keep up to date with all the latest videos. But now that's out of the way, let's get into the video. And this week, we finally have another guest. I haven't had a guest for weeks. Um, and we're kind of going to we're kind of gonna touch on it a little bit because I'm to blame. Um, I hold my hands up, sorry. <laughs> also, we are, I, I'm very ill uh, and, and my... My co-host today... Coronavirus. Is, it's not coronavirus. <laughs> My co-host is actually going to be carrying most of this podcast. He doesn't know this yet. He now does. Um, and it's someone we've had on before. Someone had one of the longest podcasts I think I've ever had. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it is Elliot. Uh, I can never pronounce your last name. I'm sorry. Bastiani. Yeah. That's it. Right. Well, Elliot, how are you doing, man? <clears throat> I'm all right. A lot better than what you're doing, from the sounds of it. Yeah, <laughs> mate. Honestly, <laughs> like in the last... I'd probably say it's lasted me about four or five days. It's literally come out of nowhere. I was going to say your Instagram stories over the last few days. Yeah. Like, you, yeah, I'm not going to even go there. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely been interesting, to say the least. But um, we, we, we're ticking on. We're going by. I live with Nick. Nick's a nurse. She, she's checked me over. I'm all good. It's just the flu, okay? I'm past the contagious point. It's a viral thing. I've just got to man up and, and get on with it. Uh, but yeah, so obviously since the last podcast, that was... 16th of january because it was my birthday oh oh okay well it makes sense that you'd remember that but yeah. um okay so what's that coming up a couple of months really uh two days from being two months yeah there we go have you been up to much in that time pan no <laughs> fair enough mate. fair enough <laughs> no not really just been playing video games like I basically said this in the last podcast playing video games and work enough fair enough just didn't know if anything had changed since now usually i'll be sitting forward but the plan is that now I'm settled, I don't move. He's um, just going to melt into the sofa <laughs> gradually over the course of the podcast. I do want to say thank you to every single person that has got in touch uh, and said, look, you know, rest up, don't upload. Like, I really appreciate it. Uh, however, my brain works in a very weird way. I want to be consistent. I really, This is my passion. I love doing it. And the podcast is one thing I look forward to every single week. So I wanted to make sure I could do this. Now, the reason I haven't had any guests on is because people that I really want to get on have just well, been busy. The schedule's kind of been all over the place. And there's one person sitting next to me that I've just not, not in a horrible way, but I hadn't thought of to call up and say, oh, do you want to jump on again? Because I didn't want to be that guy to just approach you and be like, oh, I haven't spoken to you in a while. I just, just want to ignore the pleasantries, just jump on a podcast, like help me out. Um, but Elliot has, has reassured me that every time I need someone, just to call him up. And I, I don't yeah, know why I, I didn't. I've, I've said multiple times, like if you want, if you want a guest, I'm free. Like Friday, Friday after work's a bit of a, bit of, a, stretch, bit of a difficult one, bit of a stretch. Um, you know, I'd be sitting here in my work clothes, basically, and it's not <laughs> not the best look in the world. Um, probably not the best smell for Jay either. Although at the moment you at probably moment, wouldn't notice. Yeah, I can't smell anything but, anyway. Uh, no, for like Saturday afternoon or whatever. I mean, I could do Friday nights, but it'd be quite late. Yeah, um, I usually for, for those of you who are interested, I usually try and record the podcast midweek because that way it gives me plenty of time to get it edited and ready for Sunday. This week it's actually Saturday night when we're recording this, so I'm in for a long night. Nick is going to hate me, but I appreciate you coming on. I really do. Uh, now, there's a few things I want to talk about. Firstly, um, the Vaping with Vic video. Uh, I kind of feel like a bit of an idiot because I uploaded the kind of mini podcast last week. You guys seem to really enjoy it, so thank you for watching it. But at the same time I uploaded it, which was 5 p.m., the exact same time Vaping with Vic released a new video explaining why he was back. So a lot of people were like, yeah, he's back, by the way. And I'm like, oh, like, it couldn't have come at a worse time because I recorded it the night before to get it ready. And as it uploaded, I saw his notification. I was like, oh, man, that's not going to age well. Um, but no, I'm glad he's back. Like, genuinely, I watched his video. He was saying that uh, he finds that e-liquid reviews are getting targeted. Um, YouTube, the vaping YouTube is a weird space to be in right now. It, no one really knows what's going well, on. Well, I think, I think, um, I mean, I watch a lot of gaming YouTubers. Um, also some, I don't know what, what category you'd put them in. But, um, like, more political leaning channels as well Got people like Stephen Crowder uh, not Shapiro. that far I, I watch I watch uh, Jeremy from the quartering okay. who's a bit of a controversial person on YouTube um, you know some people like him some people don't I do like his content um, you know I watch a lot of like gaming stuff as well Angry Joe show 
And just to be honest, at the moment, like a lot of people, it's not just vaping, it's not just political stuff, it's not just gaming, it's, it's you know, everyone's being targeted for, at the moment, you know? Oh, 100%. I don't want to make out that we're one of the only niches. Um, I've, I've, I've been in love I with I think YouTube vaping field. and like vaping and stuff, I think YouTube's been trying to sort new. of, I'd say that I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I'll come out and say that I reckon YouTube is probably hitting vaping stuff hard. Oh, it is. Because and, they want to censor it and make it all kid friendly and all the rest of it. It's a weird one. So as you guys know, I've been in love with YouTube for over a decade. I, I absolutely love this, this platform. It's the best thing ever. Um, whether it's been as a consumer or as a creator, either way, I still love it just as much. And one thing I've noticed, I watch a variety of channels, all the way from like PewDiePie to DIY Table, like you name it, I'll yeah, watch it. Like, do you know what I mean? I've got same such a wide here. variety. And what I've noticed since the adpocalypse... The it's different. first one, yeah. Yeah, since the first one, really, there's little pocket niches over time. It's like a domino effect. One's been affected, then no one worries about it. It's sorted itself out. Then the next niche, then the next niche. And it kind of feels like the vaping one's been dragging a little bit. Now, let me tell you why I think it is. Uh, this channel, I said in the last week's podcast, we now set up a Patreon. Thank you to the people that are donating to the Patreon. I absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, but when I was mentioning it, I purposely went through... Uh, the monetization guidelines for YouTube. Yeah. Like I went through it like a fine tooth comb and I wanted to make sure that if the channel is monetizable, what can I monetize? What can I just not do? I don't want to bring any, you know, unwanted attention to the channel by all means. I want to follow the rules. It's an American run company, right? Yeah, of course. They don't want, they've tied vaping in with tobacco, which I get a lot of countries have done with their laws and their, and their policies. Yeah. So when I was reading through it, it actually had its own box. So it had smoking, you cannot promote the use of, um, essentially anything to do with tobacco. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. It's very dangerous to your health. But then just below it, electronic cigarettes, the exact same. Yeah. So it's like, cool. What about reviewers? Like we're not, we're not necessarily saying buy this product, but you shouldn't be. It should be a case of this is what it does. Yeah, but I mean, when in, you look in at a from sense, a health reviewing, perspective, reviewing vape stuff and doing vape related content, you know, they've, you know, YouTube, Google, I've got, they, you know, they got their team of lawyers. They could quite easily just say, oh, well, you know, because of this, this and this, you are actually promoting said and yeah, said no, product. I, I and get then, it. then you get hit. I just find it strange purely because <clears throat> even with like, because like I said, it's an American run company. It's based around their, their amendments and all that sort of stuff. And that's cool. I'm on their platform at the end of the day. I want to abide by their rules. Mm -hmm. But you go to the gun section and that's a bit of a gray area. Because <laughs> like you can and you can't. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, oh. If vaping was more of a widely accepted thing like it is in this country, I think it wouldn't be a problem monetizing it. Mm. And it's not like, like I said to you guys last week, it's not like I want to make money from it, but it gets to a point where money comes from somewhere. Whenever you're doing a passion as a hobby and it grows and grows, money comes from somewhere, do you know what I mean? So it's something I wanted to talk about and get out of the way. Um, but I just I thought it was weird. I just wanted to address it, you know, going through it all and hearing what Vaping with Vic had to say. He finds that e-liquid reviews are getting hit harder than anything else in this, in this like little pocket niche, uh, which I find strange. I, I just, I don't know why e -liquid, Maybe because it's nicotine-based. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I mean, they, I mean, nowadays they've got to put, you know, this product contains nicotine on everything vaping related. Yeah. Tank, mod, batteries in some cases, liquids, um, you know, which, you know, a lot of us realize that that's stupid. There is no nicotine in a mod. You know, yeah, um, I've said before, I'm all for regulation. If it's got to be stupid warning labels, then cool. Like for the for the uneducated people, the people that are new to it, then yeah, it is helpful to I've, have that. But there are certain things like batteries. It's like, well, why are you putting it on them? It's no nicotine on the battery. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's lithium. But <laughs> it's like it's like um, obviously America with the whole vaping flavor ban epidemic or pandemic or whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, honestly, mate, I feel for. I them. think that's partly why or if not a large part of why e-liquid reviews are being hit so hard because yeah, it's crazy you know you've got a guy going just no no this is just like a, an example like oh i'm trying crazy gorilla banana flavor from this and this company and they're like oh you're advertising to kids yeah yeah again there it could is, be part of that in it i understand that and, and i think that that's why I've, I've chose to go to patreon route and not monetize the channel if anything still gets struck then yes i'll abide by the rules uh, I'm not trying to not abide by the rules, but I don't want to be seen as advertising the kids because that is not what I'm doing. And if you look at the analytics, no one on the age of 18 watches the channel, which is good. It means people are aware that vaping is for adults. Now, I'm not saying that every child on the planet goes, oh, well, vaping is for adults. I'm not, do you know what I mean? There are still, as a percentage-wise, there'll be people that are just curious and click on stuff. 
it's the same when I work in store. I have kids come in here underage and try and buy stuff. And I have to like, obviously refuse them and ID them and go through a process. It's the same with anything. I just think it's a bit of a gray area, especially being in a country which is so pro-vape. I just find it strange. It's like, oh, they were, I can't monetize this. Uh, I mean, okay, cool. I'll find a way around it. Um, but that's basically what vaping, vaping with Vic was saying. Um, you know, he, he had to go through all 2,100 of these videos and remove all the shop links in case they were there, um, discount codes or anything that was related because he was saying it's more on clickable links. Yeah. I can, um, I so can, I was like, uh, oh, that makes sense. But yeah. apparently audible links don't get picked up. So when you actually put in the video, they can't stop you doing that. Like it's, they just physically can't. You have the free. I think, I think there are some links that are whitelisted by the algorithm. Like yeah, if you're being sponsored by, I don't know, like, you know, for maybe for you like Teespring or Audible or, you know, you get some people like Rage Shadow Legends, which yeah, is a massive one at the moment. Obviously, um, I think those are sort of whitelisted. Yeah, like of course. Google Play Store links, Amazon links, yeah. because... Well, what worries me is, because it is an algorithm picking these things up, right? Mm -hmm. The only links I've got in my description are the link to the merch with a discount code. Um, and I also have more of my own reviews on the channel. The, the, they're handpicked as what I think, of, from my own reflection of my work, of what I think the best reviews are. Not on the products, but just the way it's shot, or the way it's put together as a video. Yeah, I have a little link to those. Any company I talk about now, I put their Instagram handles. So it's not a clickable link and it's not me trying to get around it. It's just trying to be like, cool, I'll play by the rules. But if people are still interested and want to go don't want to Google it, at least they've got their Instagram, something like that. Yeah, I th And I'm I just hoping it's... I don't pick up things like merch or um, I've got affiliate links to my, my actual setup camera, things I use. Well, does that count? Uh, no, I think, I, mean? I think, like, I think, I think in general stuff area. like that's okay. It's just like if you had a link to say, I don't know, Smock. Like if you yeah, use so my link, that. you get fifteen percent off your next order from your from Smog. Yeah, so I think that would probably be flagged up. But I mean, the algorithm algorithm changes every day, and people just don't know. That's why people like Angry Joe quartering, you know, the quartering they're using, you know, maybe not Patreon for the quartering, but like you know, other means. Yeah, Mine, Minds is a big one. Jabra, I think, is another one. You know, Angry Joe shows now done a Patreon because um, like all of his stuff just gets demonetized as soon as he uploads it. So I'm saying I want to play it safe and <clears throat> you guys know, you know, I mean, I speak to you for this about hours when you come in the shop, but yeah. it's a passion of mine. It's what I want to do. And the end goal is to make a living from it. And yes, I know that's a very hard thing to attain. It's a very hard, Especially it's, it's now. the dream. I get that. And that doesn't bother me. I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep going. And we've, we've got such an amazing community that it's constantly growing. And I'm so grateful for that. But at the same time, if I've got a million subscribers and I'm not making any money, I'll still do it for the love of it. I've been on this platform for five, six years now, doing it for no money anyway. So I will continue to do that. But it's knowing what I can and can't do. Um, and I think when, when I was watching Vic's video about why he's being back, and he was saying that he's removed all the illegal reviews, put them on a third party website. So if people want to go watch it, they can. Yeah, um, like Minds or And I think that's a good, good idea. However, the way I'm looking at it is I've got a lot of companies that want me to review their e-liquid and I've got no issue doing that. It's part of vaping. And mm. if that's going to get flagged, I want to make sure I play by the rules. Now, if it's a clickable link, cool, I'll put their socials in the description because I'm not actively promoting it. I'm saying, this is what I think of them. I think if you want it, to check them out, there's their Instagram. You're going on another platform to check them out. It's not I think, a clickable I think link. it's different for someone like you as well because you're I'm not, not spot monetizing yeah, yeah. One, yeah. you're you're you know not to be rude, but you're a small channel. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're going to be, you know, it's, I mean, there Slip are smaller the channels like five to ten k subscribers that have been, you know, some of them have been picked up and yeah, shafted yeah. by the algorithm. Well, I was talking to but, uh, uh, Sir Vapes a lot at the expo. Yeah, and he was like, oh, you know, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but he was saying, oh, just a word of advice is try not to put anything CBD related in because YouTube just doesn't like it. It will yeah. flag it instantly. And I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, honestly, I've learned my lesson. Just don't do it. And I was like, oh, I appreciate the heads up. Like, honestly, thank you. So I haven't done anything like that. There's loads of companies I want to work with at CBD. And if it means that I can't put a clickable link, then cool, that's a workaround. But at the same time, I'm looking at it from a, from a, from a different perspective. Like, regardless of making money on it or not, I want to educate people in, in another avenue of something they can do. That's going to, CBD has helped millions of people and it's still relatively new and it's becoming more and more popular. And I just think, what? So they're just going to cut that market off. Like, I, don't, I don't see what they're gaining from it. I think there are I mean? ways to work around it. You know, different taglines in your video titles, not like deliberately saying cannabido or CBD in the first 30 yeah. seconds of the video or something like that. Um, you know, other video sites. I mean, obviously YouTube's still the biggest, the biggest market 
for online oh, video content. Exactly. And that's why I love it so much. It's just, oh, it's not about YouTube. I just fall in love with it. <laughs> I just, I find, I find myself getting into that wormhole every evening now. Mm. Well, when I get a chance, I'm always editing something. But, you know, when I get a few hours and I'm, I'm checking stuff out and catching up with other creators. But one thing um, I really wanted to touch on was um, the update on the coronavirus. Now, I know you guys are probably bored and sick to death about hearing this word coronavirus or COVID-19. That also gets you demonetized. <sighs> well, lucky I'm not monetized then, isn't it? Um, so I think that's, that's what I said, like, just quickly. Like, I think that's also why... Um, a channel like yours has been fine so far. It's because if you, it, it, like one of the main issues with YouTube is if you're trying to monetize controversial content. Yeah, no, I've seen a lot of creators that have been hit by that. 100%. But like a lot of, like even I watch um, a small YouTube channel. It's not small anymore. It's called TLDR News. Okay. And um, they've covered like Brexit and stuff and people have like subscribed to them in droves lately because of what they've like, Yeah, I can imagine. It's a concise, hot topic to talk about. Yeah. understandable explainings of Brexit and stuff. Um, so go check them out. <laughs> uh, really good guys. And they've like, they've said like all of our, every time we've mentioned coronavirus, that's it. It's just instant demonetization. It's crazy. And I suppose for, from that angle, they're trying to stop uh, people panicking or, or misinformation. And I totally get that. Well, big giant. techs come together now, Facebook, Instagram and stuff. And they've said, yeah, we're going to like really hard, like stomp out false fake news about and that's good. coronavirus. It's a long time coming, to be honest. Yeah. And I, I get that, but it's more of a quick update in terms of, how it's affecting things like live events. So mm. obviously you guys know we went to Vapor Expo, had an amazing time. Um, and my goal this year was to go to as many expos around the world as possible, right? Whether it was self-funded from you guys, from a company, whatever. My goal was to get as much content from Vapor Expos as possible. The way it's going right now, I don't think there's going to be any live events like globally. The Premier League's been suspended for four weeks. The, the Sunday F1. League's out as well for football. Even Sunday Not that I like football, but oh, it's crazy. It's gone all the way down to grassroots, which just shows the you know how serious they're taking it, which is good. But Italy as a country is like closed, which I still find strange. I mean, I know this is obviously is something to take in, in you know something to take seriously, and we have to take precautions. I get it. But looking at it from a very selfish point of view, I'm thinking 2020s, all, think of how many events in different industries go on across the calendar year that aren't going to Like 2020 is going to be a strange year. I know obviously people's health comes first. I get that. I'm not saying it doesn't. But I'm just trying to get you guys to understand or imagine like there's no World Cup in, in, in Japan this year. Is it the Rugby World Cup? That cancelled. Like, well, the Rugby well, World Cup already happened, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, Euros has been cancelled. Sorry. Euros. For football, yeah. Euros has been cancelled. The Premier League stopped. Um, I know Vape Jam already said they were cancelled before this outbreak came out, but I've got a feeling that all the other vaping, uh, vape expos are going to be cancelled indefinitely until they have, obviously, a clear go ahead. Coachella was pushed back to October. Like, it's just mad. Like, actually seeing it unfold, it's just scary, man. Yeah. It's just one of those things. And we don't really know how long it's going to have a knock-on effect within this industry. I touched on it before. We were talking about how a lot of the stuff comes from China, like the coils and stuff, more the consumable side. Obviously, hardware does too. Um, but in terms of units that they, they ship, coils, obviously, it's in the millions. So we don't really know how long that's going to last because European wholesalers are still being affected now that it's spread. It's, it's global now. So it's not even a case of, oh, like, cool, we've got it under control. I, I think for the tech industry, I mean, I touched on this in the last podcast, but like I said, like the vape industry and the tech industry are quite heavily linked. Um, and I think like, you know, China got hit. Obviously, it was it was the epicenter of yeah, the of outbreak. Um, so they've had to shut everything down, um, you know, stop production. So then Rightfully so as obviously, well. eventually the European wholesalers are going to run out if things don't kick off, kick yep. back off in China. But now it's spread to Europe, so it's like a knock on. It's like a yeah, domino effect. That's what I'm saying. It's getting so crazy. So it's like it's just going to keep being like. <clears throat> I don't know quite how to put it into words, explain it properly, but like, it's like it's if we didn't effect. get affected, if we didn't get affected, then obviously China would bring back up, and we'd only have like maybe a month or whatever of a of a shortage. But now, it's but now global. Europe's affected as well. It's mad. And China's only just starting barely to recover. It's have like you, how uh, many months does that mean that 
you know, vape shops or tech shops are going to be delayed, without stock. Yeah, if it's a delayed effect, then like you said, China's hit the peak of infection, so now they can start getting over over the hill, right? That's just happened, and everywhere else is just starting to get infected in, in yeah. like, you know, serious numbers. So like you said, it's like a delayed effect, so yeah, I mean, just, it's like not, just not, not, staggered. Not uh, so it's, so like, it's going to be interesting. Um, now, I can rest assure you that for people who know where I work, that we are very well stocked. It's not a problem. Not saying that we're, you know, you need to come in like apocalypse and, and hoard 6,000 toilet rolls like everyone in the UK has been doing. If you're doing that, you're an idiot. Stop doing that. Like, it just makes no we're sense. Like, why toilet roll? People who genuinely need it can't get it now. So, uh, well yeah. done if you're one of those. And if you're not, you're a respectable, decent human. So, I appreciate you not hoarding random stuff. I, I've never gone to the shop and not been able to get pasta. Why is it such a commodity? Or so? I just, well, I think, I I think as this. well, like, I was sent this. I don't think it was in here. It was somewhere else the other day. But it's like you you get the people that rush out and panic buy. Yep. Like toilet rolls, pasta, soups, whatever. Um, and then you get the people that go into the shop and think, oh, crap, there's barely any of that left. Yep. So then they think, well, I better stock up now before yep. it's all gone. So you, uh, with that as well, you get the knock-on effect yep. of people panic buying and then people going, shit, well, I've, there's barely any of that left, so I'll stock up now. <laughs> exactly. Just in case there's none next week or the it's week mad. after. And Nick, then you Nick just end up with um, like elderly people going out for their daily shop and they're like, go to six enough. different yeah. shops and they can't even pick up a can of freaking tomato soup. You it's know? crazy. <laughs> Nick was saying she come home one day and, um, yeah, again, I hope she doesn't mind me saying, but she was saying that, Certain certain person in her ward had sent a meta group message out. They had to start cable tying hand sanitizer to the beds in the ward because people were just nicking it. People were walking on wards and ripping them off and just walking out. That is insane. That's a hospital. Do you, do you know what I mean? How crazy is how? Like it's not got to the point where people are like, oh, well, this person's in bed in hospital already, so I'll deprive them of hand sanitizer. Like, well, that is insane. People why, ripping off a wall. I mean, it's, it's like crazy. why? Why do you? Why do you think that the WHO waited so long before they came out and said this is a pandemic? Because yeah. they knew that people were just going to panic. Yeah. Mass hysteria, it, and it's like it's crazy. Most people. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to say that this isn't a serious thing. No, it, it thing. is serious. It we is. need to have precautions in place, of course. But for, let's say, 80% of people who are healthy, no underlying health problems, strong it's just a system. strong... It's like having double flu, a bad case of man flu. Like, most people, it's got... I mean, I don't want to get too much into it, but it's like, yeah, you know, course, it's like a 3.5 expert. something percent mortality rate, which... I mean, for something just to come out of the blue, I think that's what sh shocked a lot of people. It's come out of nowhere and yeah. it's just hit everywhere and it's like, whoa. But um, Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's extremely contagious. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, it's just literally come out of nowhere and boff, it's gone global. Like, it's like, yo, it's been like a few months. But it's like, I saw I saw it like a, a graph, like a, a graph thing the other day, and it was like, you know, so far coronavirus has killed like a few thousand people, and I'm not trying to... See, I've got a problem with you know, these but, graphs. But, like, car accidents were like five million people a year or something, and tobacco's like... 400,000 people a year and like only four and a half, five thousand. I mean, obviously, if you've lost someone, then yeah, my condolences, but it's... There's yeah. always something to compare it to. You can always make it Obviously, the media is going to do what the media yeah. does best, but... They've done a very good job it's, to scare It's people. like, you know, you don't hear about, oh, tobacco's killed half a million people this year, but you hear about four and a half, five thousand people dying from coronavirus, and you're like... It's mad, isn't it? It's mental, absolutely mental. But um, obviously, anyone who is listening, watching, still take the necessary precautions. Don't panic buy and buy everything so people can't go about. That's just inconsiderate and not very nice. If you if if you've got flu-like symptoms or you you know just follow government regulations, um, you know if you sneeze, sneeze into a tissue, sneeze into your hand, wash your hands with some proper disinfectant sanitizer whatever don't go and rush out and buy 50 bottles of hand sanitizer <laughs> you know I just, just, don't see just make sure you wash your hands properly and you know like like with the flu you know to be fair it. Kill I, it I, I, minute know, with I know the this is a serious topic and i don't want it to be just a debbie downer episode right no. sorry if your name's debbie by the way uh, <laughs> i heard that some debbies get offended by that so just in case the to see the light side of this 
Um, I completely lost my trail of thought. I don't know what you were even talking about. <laughs> it was still coronavirus. Yeah. Um, you were saying about uh, hand sanitizer and stuff. Toilet roll. Um, oh, mate, I've completely lost my trail of thought. Uh... Don't rush out and buy 80,000 rolls of toilet paper. Don't rush out and buy 80 bottles of hand sanitizer. Just like... Just be b b a bit of common sense. What I don't understand... Oh, this is what I was going to say. What I was going to say is um, I don't understand the toilet roll thing to a degree purely because the virus doesn't make you shit yourself. Oh, I've seen loads of like funny memes where it's like the reason people are buying toilet paper is because when one person sneezes, a hundred people shit themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the, te the teenager one you said earlier was hilarious as well. That's oh, the, yeah, the, go the government aren't closing schools down yet because they're, uh, they're terrified of what it would be like to have three million teenage boys at home for two weeks. That's why people are rushing out and buying toilet paper. Oh, man. <sighs> but yeah... I it's one of those things. I hope things get sorted. We get things in place and things start returning to normal. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's what I was going to say. Why, why do people think that all of a sudden we now need to wash our hands? Like it was never a thing. Yeah. That, that, that in this country, they're making it such a big thing. Make sure you wash your hands. Make sure you wash your hands. We were doing that anyway. But now people are taking it to the extreme. Like you said, get 100 bottles of sanitizer and literally every time they take a step, so I better sanitize my hand. So it's overkill. Yes, you need to do it. Take the precautions, but... It's like we never knew how to wash our hands before this. That, I, that just baffles me, mate. Just baffles me completely. Well, there are some pretty <sighs> disgusting people around, so you never had idea. <laughs> I will not deny you that. I can't actually see the screen. So I don't know how long we've got left, roughly. Uh, Everyone watching this. You might, might want to reset it. It's 28 minutes and 40. Oh, perfect. Um... The people watching this are going to go, wow, we've just seen two guys just look at the screen for no reason. It's just because we can't see the monitor. And it's um, because he can't record more than 30 minutes at a time. Not yet anyway. It's also being changed. Now, there is something I really want to talk about within this industry in the next part, and I want to get your opinion, and I want to get your guys' opinions in the comments. So give us two seconds, and we'll be right back for the main topic of the podcast. Welcome back to the Chilling with Yummies podcast. In today's main topic, I want to talk about something that has been going under the radar for a long time and has snuck up on us at the last minute. Don't know whether it's down to yeah. <laughs> poor, uh, poor communication. preparation or communication. Um, but this is going to... I Honestly, as we're going through this, I want you guys to be commenting below because I want your genuine thoughts. Um, because once I read it out, I'll give my thoughts and Elliot's thoughts and... Um, yeah, I just want to know because this, this is something. So uh, a lot of our distributors, um, not just ones we use, but I mean, you know, pretty much worldwide, anywhere in Europe, have said from Monday, the 16th of March, 2020, we will no longer be able to provide replacement glasses slash pods that extend a product's capacity beyond 2 mil. So this is the 16th of March this year. No in extension In two days' glasses. time, that's Monday. Literally, a day after this podcast goes up, can't get them. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, literally nothing. Now, I yeah. want to read, they've actually put, um, the article is the, the part six of the TPD. So I'll read it out so you guys get to know what they're actually on about uh, and why some people are freaking out. Some people are a bit more chill about it. So what they're saying is part six of the tobacco and related product regulations 2016, which is when the TPD was obviously passed and set in motion i was gonna yeah. say set in stone set in motion um it sets out a legal requirement for the sale and supply of e-cigarettes and nicotine containing refill containers in brackets e-liquids in the uk under regulation 35 manufacturers rebranders and importers of these products may only sell them in the uk if they have been notified to M mhra products must also adhere to the requirements set out in the regulations Replacement parts that could contain nicotine, such as replacement tank glass, are considered to fall under the regulations and require notification where they are not identical to the original part in the notified product. The regulations require that the tank or refill capacity of an e-cigarette must not exceed 2 mil. See our webpage here for more details. Um, the MHRA, I don't know why I can't read today, uh, has identified... Um, 
that a website is selling a replacement tank or glass which extends the tank to have a capacity over two mil. These products are non-compliant with the regulations and cannot be sold sold either on their owner on their own or as part of a kit as of March 16th, 2020. First off, what are your thoughts on that? Well, probably <laughs> probably gonna upset a few people, but I always okay. I always thought it was weird. What do you mean? What the, well, the tank TPD says that you can't sell a tank, you know, you've got your maximum 10 milliliter bottles of juice with your yeah, nicotine, with nicotine in. And to be fair, I totally agree with that. I think it keeps things <clears> nice and, and simple. you can only sell a tank or a mod kit, plus obviously a mod plus tank kit, Yeah. with a tank that takes two mil. Yep. But then you can just say to the guy behind the shop counter, oh, you got any bubble glass for that, mate? It's like, well, in that case, what's what's the point of selling the kit? What's the point of selling the mod or the tank with a two mil so glass this is where the when you can just go behind and say, oh, I got a six mil bubble glass for that, mate. Right. So I always thought it was a bit of a loophole. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. So when the TPD come in in 2016, that it was the, the big hitters. That's what they wanted to make sure every vape shop adhered to. And I totally get that. The gray area was... Um, and I've checked this up with trading standards and all the right things. The gray area is adding nicotine shots. You can only do it after a purchase has been made if they ask you to do it. Still don't because it's a gray area. And when it comes to extension glasses, yet again, you can purchase them after point of sale, not at the same time. So you have to purchase the kit and in the next transaction say, can I have the extension glass? Because it's taken... A <laughs> so, I know. So I always found that but to be so strange. It's like, just a loophole might... that is finally caught up with us. So yeah. now everything in the TPD they agreed in 2016 is now going to be fully... Basically, it's out. like, oh crap, we forgot about that bit. Yeah, we should probably add that in because it's been four years. Or it will be a four, uh, within four years. Yeah. Now me personally, yes, it's a pain. It genuinely is. No one likes vaping at two mil. And if you do, well, fair enough, you crack on. I don't think I've, I've never bought a bubble glass. Thing. So you've always vaped at two mil? Well, no, I've got tanks. I've got, I think my TFB8. Like Pre-TPD, yeah, obviously. Pre since... I've got pre-TPD tanks, but I've never, since TPD came in, I think I've only bought like two tanks anyway. And I've just oh, left them enough. as is. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Then you're obviously used to that. That's fair play. And for anyone who's watching who's not part of the UK, you've got nothing to worry about because obviously a TPD is mainly a European thing with, with the UK involved. With the UK leaving Europe and the whole Brexit thing, I really don't know I what we're going to do. I think they'll. I think, I think to be honest, they'll. I think to be honest, they'll keep a lot of. Oh yeah, European I'd like them to. And stuff. I think I want them to change, change the tank size law straight away because I think it, not just from my benefit. I, I really don't mind if it's two mil or four mil. I like having the more capacity because it just means I haven't got to fill it up as often. I've, I mean, in, in that sense, there are sense, people that just vape with bigger tanks. They will yeah, not do I mean, two mil. Can you imagine? All right, Cleta 120, 100 watts, two mil tank. It's not big enough. Three pulls is gone. I mean, I, f I fill this up about fucking 20 times a day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So having a bubble glass that's even just double, four, four mil, that then I mean, cuts it down to 10 I times a day. I suppose, I suppose I could say that that's one thing I've never understood. You can go in and buy a 10 milliliter bottle of juice with nicotine in it or yep. a 50 mil short fill with a nick shot. Yeah. So if I can buy that, why can't I buy uh, an eight mil tank? I've got 10 mil of juice with nicotine in it right there, like, you know, 50 mil with nicotine. So yeah, why can I only put thing. it in a two mil tank? It's, yeah, it's been an ongoing thing. Uh, I know there's a few parliaments in Europe when the TPD was announced. Because um, I know, for example, France. Now, yet again, quote me if I'm wrong, but as far as I'm aware, France didn't take the tank restriction, but they took the nicotine restriction. So you can still get five, six mil glasses out there, not a problem. I'm trying to think, because I lived in France at the time of the TPD. And could you still get bigger glasses with the kit? Or do you have to buy them separately? Uh, I'm trying to think whether it was the nicotine they adhered to or the tanks. I think it was the nicotine only. The UK took both. Yeah. We went, all right, we'll be as safe as we can. We'll take both. Now, I understand that because what they're trying to say is they want to keep it as safe and as regulated as possible. Mm. It stops um, uneducated people in the industry giving out wrong advice, giving out dangerous products, and it also uh, protects new vapors or people making the switch less vulnerable to anything going wrong. And I totally get that. However, not really. 
Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Two mil. How does how does being constrained to two milliliters stop any safety hazards or That's what I'm saying. In, or... in, the, in the tanks, I don't get it. In the liquid, I do. So if you was to walk around with a sixty mil right of PG liquid at eighteen milligram, <laughs> yeah. see me our alarm bells ring. That's not safe. You shouldn't be doing that. Because if you're not an experienced vapor, that's a lethal amount and a big amount that can do you some damage. So I get the regulations there. With the tanks, it makes no sense. It doesn't matter. And I think what they try playing it off as is more of a child safety thing. If a child gets into it, it's only two, two mil of consumption rather than eight mil. It's going to do a lot less damage. Yeah, but if the Maybe child finds true. a 60 mil bottle of juice with 12 milligram in it and they drink it. But you can't get that from a vape shop. You can only get three or a six max in yeah. a short fill, right? So that's how they're trying to cap in it. Well, there's nothing, nothing stopping you from milligram. going online and buying a box of Nick shots and just drinking yeah, no, a Nick shot. Is, they could true. always end up end up with a Nick shot my, and drink my, that. My argument to this whole TPD thing is, yes, if you want to regulate and make it safer, crack on, do your thing. Mm -hmm. And the same with the child caps, right? Yeah, totally agree. I could barely open them. I work in the industry, so I must well, be a child, do you know what I mean? But If they, if they knew what care, they were doing, what they'd say is, your vape shops are not allowed to sell mech mods. Nowhere can sell a mech mod. Or only physical shops can sell mech mods have have and they have to they have to ask the person buying it can you do this 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 and this and this but how how many times have you seen or <clears> tried <throat> buying a mech in the last four or five years personally i haven't but i could i well, used to be i, I can walk tell in you a shop from and go, experience can i get a mech mod so or go on ebay my personal experience yeah you can do it that way but my yeah. experience within stores yeah is they have done that they've got them yeah. cool you need to prove that you can build you need the ohms law you do this and then once you do all that in front of me and you can have it. And I, I appreciate that. That's, yeah, again, taking initiative from mm -hmm. the industry standpoint and making sure we're not giving out the mech mods to anyone. Because if you don't know, they're not regulated. If you don't know what you're doing, it's like holding a firework. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's how come all this, a lot of this stuff in America. Exactly. Like, it was like, oh, $500 vape, sale. Vape mods, okay. are uh, vape mods are dangerous. No, it's just where shops have sold people. And not people educated people. mech mods yeah, exactly. and they've vented in their pockets or... Yeah. It, my only argument with the whole child safety, and I, I totally am, I'm, I'm for child safety, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. But you can keep a litre of bleach under your sink and a kid can still get into that. But all they did to stop it was a child cap. They didn't restrict what you could buy bleach in. I, I thought they were, uh, because, uh, because of the rise of um, acid attacks and stuff, I thought they were bringing in um, enforcement to people that buy bleach and chemicals and i thought they were i went to my local tesco's a couple of weeks ago we had our drains being clogged so yeah. i went to my tesco's to get drain unblocker mm -hmm. i also bought an energy drink mm -hmm. i didn't get id for the drain unblocker which could kill me if i in insume it yeah i did for the red bull the uk everyone i thought i thought they were um it's crazy there was there was talk last year at unless some they've point weakened about, the bleach itself to a, under a level where i don't know i thought i thought cool. um it might have been for online stuff because i think on amazon it says you have to sign for this and prove that you're over 18 or over Maybe 16 on amazon, yeah that makes sense but i thought i thought they were but thinking you could just about walk introducing to tesco's yeah. buy bleach and no one bat an eyelid you can go self-service scan it pay for it walk out yeah i, I do understand i just it's, thought they were potentially bad. going to bring in enforcement for stuff like because of the amount of acid attacks that have now happened. yeah of course but i want to know what you guys think about the new tank regulation changes coming up so soon uh, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. Are you happy with it? Are you not? What would you like to see change? I'm genuinely really interested to know what you guys think because I know a lot of you personally. I know a lot of you come and watch the videos as and when. And everyone's a different style of vapor and I really appreciate that. It's a very... Um, what's the word? Our community is very... Do a bit of everything. It's not just one thing. It's not like all rebuildables. It's varied. We've got a varied, yeah, got community. varied community. So be interested to know what you guys think. Um, because for me, being in the stores, I know I'm going to deal with a lot of angry customers uh, because there's no information out about it. So you just come to our attention very, very late. You might be um, wanting to put a post or something in the window. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to do something and just try and tell people word of mouth that we can't do it as of this, this day. It's just not possible. Um, however... Do you remember the release of the Clio XO? Because this is what I wanted to get onto next, the ways around it. And I don't want this to be, like, I don't want to abide by the rules. I get it. But for those who really want a bigger tank without changing the glass, which is what it says, do you remember the release of the Clio XO? Cool. No. So the TPD came in, mm -hmm. Spire released the Clio XO. Yeah. It's a metal tank, had restricted airflow at the top, mm -hmm. 
top fill, right? Now the XO coils were told to people on the Sly by Aspire that they're display coils. The wick only went halfway up the coil. Reason being is when you unscrewed it, all the original Cleo coils were compatible. Meaning just by changing the coil that it was actually designed for, you went from two mil to three and a half mil without changing the glass. I might have just exposed them, but I don't think anyone's gonna be watching that cares. But that is an ingenious way of getting around it because you're, you're buying it as intended and it's just a coil that's compatible. I suppose, I suppose yeah, you, you've brought up an interesting point there because there are coils being manufactured now that are compatible with many a tank. I think uh, one of the customers came in earlier and bought a Hell hell Vape and they're like... Yeah, um, so they got the Fat Rabbit and they went, oh, I heard that the Baby Beast coils are compatible. Yeah, they are. But I'll tell you what, try a Vapresso GT core because they're also compatible. See how you get on. Yeah, it's, and I wonder what the difference in, in capacity is between using a proper smock coil, a hell vape coil, and a and a GT and a, coil. And a GT um, coil. Because it could quite easily, yeah, if, could, if they're ever so slightly thinner, they could raise it to 2.3 mil or exactly. 2.5 mil. The other one as well, uh, while we're chucking companies under the bus, um, one of my favorite companies, you will, when they released the Whirl Tank, Mount Alone, they were very clever mm. because um, the glass for the Whirl Tank separately, not the ones on the, on the sticks, the actual tank separately, um, obviously you had your reinforced uh, glass uh, in the box and pre-installed you had two coils right mm -hmm. now what these coils had was plastic surroundings which made it two mil so what you had to do was pop the coil out for and a half mil tank without changing anything see that genius mate stand ahead of the curve because do you remember when everyone was putting rubber bungs in and you just pulled the bung out yeah yeah right. I remember well, that yeah. well the I can't the TPD people I, I don't know like the people high up caught onto that and went can't do that <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, and I think the Vapresso Cascade tank was a bestseller at the time. And they were the first company to weld in the metal to make it two mil. You couldn't, unless you angle grinded it off, you weren't getting it. It was stuck to two mil. So I know that they've already tried it and they're already trying to cover up the cracks. So the rubber bung we know is definitely not it, not, not an option. Mm -hmm. But the whole coil compatibility can't really shut that down. Because like you said, if you make the Cleo XO and you made XO coils, but coincidentally, another type of coil fits it and it just happens to make the tank big. Well, that's not the manufacturer's fault. Do you see what I mean? Like, I mean, oh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose it would be going backwards because obviously I think they've recently had a lawsuit with Apple because of the fact that they were using proprietary cables and connectors and this, that and the other, and they got fined. I think that was what it was for. Um, they were, they were a big thing in Europe. Like, we're not going to let you in Europe anymore unless you actually put uh, a charger cable that's universally available. Yeah. And they were like, nah, not cool. Well, we just won't sell your products. Yeah. They're like, ah. And um, <laughs> so it's like they couldn't do that to Apple and say it's got to be universal and then turn around to vape manufacturers and say, right, each coil has only, you know, you've got to have proprietary coils for every single tank that you produce. Exactly. It's got to be proprietary so that the tank's two mil. Exactly that. Because then, then that wouldn't stop a, a knockoff Chinese company coming out and saying, oh, well, we do coils that fit that. Yeah. And back at, you know, reverse engineering it and saying, well, we've made a coil that can, that's only one mil wide and it makes your tank four mil. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I love compatible coils with other tanks. And the, I, I'm being genuine here. The only reason I love it so much is because it makes so many vapors happy. Because it allows you to they... avoid using smock coils. I mean, I don't want to come out and say it, but yeah, essentially. Now, I will say as well, you guys know how much I hate smock. If you guys want to see a video on that, then uh, yeah, I'll quite happily do one like that. Not going to bash smock's um, devices and stuff. No, devices are good. And I, and I will actually say, uh, the V2 coils, single mesh, they're actually really good. Like straight up, they are actually really good. The other ones, yet yeah, again, if you start doing quad cores, triple, they're, they're all trash anyway. It doesn't matter what company you're from, they just are. Oh, I single do mesh. Like my, uh, do you like my quad core, my quad mesh? I think these are quad mesh in the factory. Oh, I just never got, oh, it's just like over-engineered coils. Like, oh, look what we can do. And I'm like, mm, just give me a single mesh. It's just same diameter in it. It's just one old. Depends what wattage you vape yeah. at. Yeah, That's true. Thing, no, I'll give you that. Um, but it just, if someone comes to me with a baby beast, right? And I'm talking... TFV8, uh, TFV12. TFV8, yeah. right? So original baby beast. They come up and they go, oh, this thing's leaking. The coils aren't last very long. And I'm like, cool. I'm going to charge you the same price as what you would pay for your regular coil, except it's going to fit. It's a different brand and it's going to completely change your vaping experience. Give them a coil, whether it's a Vapresso GT core, Hellvape core, whatever that fits. They come back next time and go, wow, not only did that taste better, but it lasted longer and it didn't leak. And I feel amazing as a person because I've been able to help that person have a better experience. 
It's yeah. not that you're going, oh, I want to cheat the system. It's a case of, oh, actually, we, we get these accords come back a lot. They're obviously not as reliable. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else we can do? Well, oh, actually, five different companies have calls that fit that. Let's try that route. And it's the, the same thing, thing. The thing is, what they could do, though, is they could just say, right, you've got to make... If they went full bore, I'm saying the TPD people, they could just say, right, it's one tank. You can't make a million different tanks. You can only make one tank, and no matter what coils in it, it ends up at two mil. Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, if they went full bore, like I, full on, yeah. Because I, I mean, nowadays, if all tanks are limited to two mil, what's the point of having eighty different tanks? They'll do the same thing. But that's just going to cripple the industry. That will cripple think so. it because everything's gone like we like we spoke about last time on, on on the previous podcast we did together. They're focusing on pod systems now. They are. They are, right? And this is something I found out the other day and it makes a lot of people annoyed, but I actually love it. So I do a lot of research. Well, I say research. I just watch a lot of vaping content creators, right? Just see what they're doing and whatever. And mm -hmm. a few of them I just genuinely enjoy. And there's a pattern I'm seeing. And the pattern is, you know, a lot of these people that have been knocking about a while hate pod systems. This little old me comes along, absolutely loves them. So uh, like I can't get on with them myself oh, just, personally. They're a game changer, mate. Like no. pod mods and pod systems are a game changer. Like I, I can't, just can't get on with. I can't mouth put these down. Lung. I just can't put these down. Yeah, but you can direct lung these. Yeah, but they're just, they're just so not, good. You, like the other day, you were telling me like the whatever it was I tried of yours. It was like the flavor's fantastic on this. I'm like, I'm like yeah, where's the flavor? <sighs> I take one puff of this. I'm like, mm. I, I get that, but then what are you eighty watts? 75. Yeah, you're not going to get that from a pod system. But like, anyway, it's just an observation <laughs> I made, all right? I seem to love pod systems and pod mods and I'm, I'm really new, like up with the the way the, the, the industry's shifting and moving and I like that. And I still like the old sub -ohm stuff. I just typically don't sub -ohm as much. Mm. But all the other people I seem to watch, they're just like, oh, another pod. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> another pod. But yeah, bit of a side note, sorry. I've, I've had way too much caffeine. I mean, I mean, I keep keeping on the same topic though. Like people used to buy the baby beast because it had like six mil capacity. Yep. Selling points. But like for why, why? Yeah, it was, selling it was points. selling points. So now it it's like, well, if we can only make two mil tanks, we might as well just make a pod system. Do you want to know the secret? Or just a generic tank? <sighs> yeah, but then you, if you make a generic tank, then every company's the same. No one's doing anything different yeah. other than maybe the color. Yeah. They just completely kill it to a point where it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, what, what, I mean, with, with like, what, what do tanks do differently now anyway? Different, slightly different airflow, slightly yeah. different refill mechanism. That's it. Oh, no. It's the main no. thing's the coils. That's, that's, is, what's yeah. the difference? Yeah, the main thing is the coils. Yeah, coils change the performance. I'll give you that. That's, that's the only thing that's really different between tanks, really, is the coils. Yeah, coils and like... Because, I mean, they've all got to be two mil. Yeah. Unless you buy an aftermarket Unless bubble glass, which you can't now. You go to pod systems and there's loads, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. even, that's even hitting refillable pods, right? I mean, but refillable pods. Yeah. They're all two the more. same except the coil. So everyone it's the I coil. Know, it's the coils that do all the difference. But everyone I know that vapes two more already, this comes out, they go, cool, I've been vaping two more anyway, but it's mouth to lung, doesn't matter. It lasts me what a four mil tank would last, direct lung, because mm -hmm. it's mouth to lung. So for us guys, psh, smashed it, doesn't matter. I'm used to that, it's fine. Yeah, a little bit annoying that you can't get a bigger pod, but at the same time, meh, is what so it I, is. I, 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 like, it I seems to be what, more of a punishment on sub than I it think, does. I think what, pod what companies are going to do, or maybe they, well, yeah, maybe they thought, well, you know, we're limited to two mil tanks. What's just the point of us pods. making a tank? Let's just, just do a pod. So. Just be ahead of the regulations all the time. It's probably, it's probably a lot cheaper for them to produce it. Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is, yeah, yeah. You know, these are like, you know, stainless steel, glass, you know, different... Uh, drip tips, refill systems, it's all engineered, all probably done in CAD and machined out and everything. They're like, or we can get a Chinese company to make us 50,000 pods for the price it would take us to make Four 500, tanks. Like yeah. 500 tanks. Yeah, no, I get it. But I mean, it's all it's all to do with the coils. So, I mean, what companies are going to do if they can't produce the bubble, if they can't sell the bubble glasses and whatever anymore in Europe, what they're just going to do is, gonna, well, what we're going to do is we're going to shave the edges of the coils off. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, like a coil like this, it's massive. Yeah, of course. Like the outer casing is probably about a mil and a bit thick. So they just did the tiniest little shim around the coil. You're a bit of a catch twenty-two, really, because at point of sale, it has to be two mil. 
No. So, like I said, with the Clio Exo, they were genius because they went, well, have Exo coils. You can still buy Exo coils. But they're really just would. compatible with previous coils. Exactly. And then that way, you get around it, there's no extension glass, it's still being used as intended. Mm -hmm. But for people who know that the other coils fit, they also know you get more juice. So it's a way around it without technically breaking any rules. The way I see it, you know. But is, I'm just curious as to what they can, what, like, if, if the people that did the TPD are actually clever enough to figure out, like, well, hang on a minute, companies are just going to start making smaller coils that fit. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we've just to exposed to give the whole them. secret. I don't know. Maybe we should just not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It's just, uh, I mean, companies always find, a oh, find ways around everything. Can you just check, see how long we've got left as well? Sorry. Uh, 24 minutes. Oh, so a couple there, minutes. Six minutes. Um, just under. So yeah, like I think it's all based on the coils. They're just going to start making smaller coils. One hundred percent, they will. And if like, they well, do, it's technically a two mil tank, so it's not illegal to sell it. But if you use this new coil that they bought out, you get two mil extra because yeah. it's thinner and it's smaller and it's whatever. <laughs> it's not breaking the rules, is it? You know technically I mean? not. No, so, it's just an, yet another loophole. Exactly, and there'll always be loopholes. There always is. But one thing, just quickly, as like an extra topic, I want to throw in this. We just bouncing conversation off to each other yeah um is do you think i know you said this in the last podcast about how uh technology is very synonymous to vaping it's got to a point and it's like not really innovating anymore mm -hmm. do you think there it's getting to the point where vaping's done everything and it just becomes a boring mundane here's your one style of kit here is your one tank because it's all regulated heavily. Here is your one drip tip that you can use. And it's just a tool rather than a way to ex still use it as a tool, but like there's no way of expressing or customizing or personalizing the device. Do you see what I mean? Like a lot of people saying, oh, it's the end of the vaping industry. It's just getting boring now. It's just being everything's been stomped out. I think I have a lot to say on that. So you might want right, to refresh restart it this. now. We'll back in a sec. <laughs> So yeah, sorry, we just had to reset this because Elliot's about to go on a massive tangent. And I, well, no, but probably longer than five minutes. All we have <laughs> right, so do you think vaping industry is dying? We're getting to a point where it's just, it's becoming boring. I think, I mean, I don't want to drag anyone under the bus either, but I remember having this conversation with Danny. What, old manager? Yeah. Man? Yeah, okay. Danny, who used to work Came here. in earlier. Shout out you, Danny. Doing well, man. Appreciate it. Um, well, I hope he's doing well as well. I didn't get to see him, unfortunately. But I remember, I remember him saying, like, that the vaping industry was getting boring. Right. So this is, I'm interested in what you say because obviously I've got my counter argument, and it, it, it does revolve around Danny a little bit. So, so I remember him saying that he was sort of getting bored with it, and it's also a problem that another one of the vape store owners in Braintree was saying a couple of years ago now. Oh right, okay. I was about to say recently, I will capitalize on that. Um. <laughs> But Just joking, he was also that. saying like there's there's nothing oh. like that's mind blowing, right? And I've said this as well myself. Like there's yeah. nothing mind blowingly awesome that's coming out. Do you, you know? think it's mind blowing that there's a little system that lets you do direct lung and mouth lung in such a small unit with a two amp fast charge? I think it's mind blowing, mate. Yeah, but I mean... Sorry, I'm just plugging pod mods as much as I can. I just love them. Yeah, carry on. No, I've got them. You know, if you, if, you know, you. Well, more than welcome to your opinion it's just for me personally this is not someone cool. who is very geeky in tune with like you know up to date with tech industry yeah. um you know it's 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 all incremental as i've already said yeah, as well yeah, no, yeah. like you know usb c on vape mods now you know you fast that charging company, yes yes if you yeah. don't catch up yeah like you know fast charging usb c making it more universal up to date but you know i think like a lot of what companies are doing now is it's gotten to a point where it's like, well, we've gone in the direction where we've made a, a 400 watt mod. Yeah. That, you know, four batteries and, you know, quadruple battery, yeah. 400 watts and stuff. Now they've gone into pod mods and it's like, well, there's a pod mod for everyone, you know? Yeah, boy. Literally, you get like the ultra portable, sleek, slim Caliburn Coco. You've got like the one, I can't remember what you said it was. Target PM80, the Aegis Boost. Yeah, and the, um, so I think you also said the smock one, the RPM, was it the RPM80? The RPM80s are yet to come out in this country. Um, I thought you already reviewed one. No, the RPM40 I reviewed, which ah. is their first gen. The RPM80 is an external battery version. 
Yeah. Vupu Vinci, Da Vinci X, Vinci Air. There's yeah. so many. I think there's like a pod mod system for everyone now. And there's also, for a few years now, there's been a mod for everyone. Do you know why I think they're so successful though? Convenience. Yeah. That's oh, I've, I've never knocked that. Yeah, I did. I mean, I did say like, you know, uh, I mean, you get like, just slip in your back pocket. Yeah. People have, general consumers have got bored of carrying a dual battery device and a massive tank on it. They'd rather carry something like this and go ask two. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, still use it. Fits in my pocket. And I get that. The way I look at that is that is genius because the companies have gone, people don't want this anymore. What have they not got? Ah, we'll do this instead. Mm. This has an Axon chip in it. That's mad. <laughs> they have that in the gen, like their flagship device. Like I'm like, that, that's pretty nuts, to be fair. Oh, yeah. Um, but no, I totally agree from what you're saying. It is more, not as intuitive. I mean, now, now what you see, you see like companies like Smoant, like, you know, they're putting like OLED screens with like mad, gizmos it? and animated backgrounds. And you had Wismec, I think it was Wismec who made a mod that was also a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, the Wismec Active. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they're just trying to make them. I think they're like, well, we've expended everything we can do on the vape side of it. Like, it vapes. They even made a watch, the amulet. Yeah, I remember that. Do you know what I mean? Yes, it was a pod system, but yeah, again, it it's was like, like It's like they've mean? expended everything they can do on the vape side. It's like, look, we can make a mod that does 400 watts, yep. uh, whatever, done. We can make, we've got the technology to make a mod that does 80 watts all day. Just keep um, me on battery loss, sorry. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, they, uh, for me personally, I think they've expended what they can do with the actual vaping side of it. And okay. they're now just trying to make them more gadgety, techy, especially the actual mods, maybe not pod mods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, Bluetooth speakers, radios, fucking OLED screens with animated backgrounds that you can customize. Well, you look at, you look at Geek Vape, you've got the Aegis X, it's a reinforced screen. Yeah. Still dust. I mean, this is basically a screen. screen. It's, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> My uh, my view on it is, and I hope Danny doesn't mind me saying this, because um, it's not from bad a bad place, but me personally, I totally get what you're saying. I had the same conversation with Danny back when I was his part-timer. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see um, he was not getting bored. See, I think he used the wrong word. I don't think he was getting bored of the industry. He fell out of love with it, and that was the difference for me. Yeah. Uh, he fell out of love with it because he couldn't see where it was going. And that's fine. Everyone has different views and stuff. Well, and I think I think it did it did stagnate for a while. Of course it did, yeah, yeah. The TPD had a massive ripple effect. So yeah. it was like, where's it going to go? And I think we've done well to recover from where it was because people were uncertain about what was going to happen. Yeah. I think it's, it's strange. A lot of people have asked me, like, why am I doing vaping content now? Oh, I'm never going to make it because I should have been doing it years ago. Mm. and well you may be right you may not be right whatever is your opinion i still love the industry and as long as that love for the industry is there it's always going to fascinate me do you, do you know what i mean and i think that's what it what it is i think a lot of people now that have been vaping for a long time are starting to fall out of love of it because things are changing and they're not but i think as well board. like i could use you as an example like you know you go on youtube you type in i don't know like you said smock rpm 40 yeah you've got 500 different YouTubers, all with varying degrees of subscriber accounts. Yeah, yeah. And their reviews are all done the same way. It's talk to the camera for five minutes, then have the camera above the box. This is oh, what's man. in the box. Let's see how it vapes. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Whatever. Done. You know, and a lot of the devices now, it's, yeah, it's good. 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 But whereas you're trying to change it up, oh, whereas I think that's where yeah. you're... You're carving out your own niche because you're not following the trend of what every, like the last 800 people that have reviewed that <laughs> item have done. Yeah, like, oh, this is put me in an awkward position. I don't like, anything. you're making it more cinematic, more community so, oriented, where it's not just, I received this from Smog. This is my unbiased review. It's great. Buy it. I'll be really honest. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to fire any shots with this, okay? So, if you are a reviewer or whatever and you're listening, please don't take offense. It's just my opinion. And yeah, like whatever. DM me if you've got issues. We'll hash it out. It's nothing. Per it's nothing. It's nothing personal. For me, as a consumer of YouTube videos, yeah. Like you said, five hundred reviews on one device, and they all do the same thing. Yes, they have their own spins. They have their own yeah, twists, in, in and the they end, have their own personality. Hundred percent. It either boils down to that person's personality, yep. which sets them apart. Like yep, yep. I still watch Sophie Vapes. So I know a lot of people 
have been put off. Yep. <laughs> or are put off by her. Not, I've still yeah, watched. Like, I still watch. Like I sometimes will watch suck my mods. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then but in the end, it's like what I'm trying to get at is that people get got bored. Yeah, of course. It's like. I've seen this before. Like every video is the same. Like yeah, like you know, some people have. Got... Oh, now for the people listening right now, and the black screen on the uh, screen, uh, the black screen on the screen, it makes no sense. My battery's run out, so bear with us just two seconds, and then you'll have some video, uh, some visuals. Damn! I told you to stop it because we <laughs> didn't have enough time, and now the bloody battery has gone. This is where you find out you've left your other battery on your office desk again. No. I'll grab that for you. If I can <laughs> not yeah. slip and slip and slide across yeah, the floor like like, like like a little a little dog on a uh the white one should be charged. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. You're right. <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> People listening right now are gonna be like, what the hell was that? I I just moved the camera into into the microphone. I'm gonna keep all this in people will be like, what's the joke? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. So for those of you listening, you're gonna get a bit of a uh, a bit of a repeat, but for those watching, <laughs> yeah, I was basically that. saying that everyone it got bored. It got boring. Yeah, no, I get like, that. I, I like I used to watch like daily videos of Sophie Vape, suck my mods, um other like vaping biker. And it was like just watching the same video over and over and over and over and over again. No, like I get that. There wasn't anyone that was pushing the boundaries. It was like a, to quote, to be like, use video game techno babble. It's like, it was the meta. Yeah, of course. It, of course was, it was like. It worked. It was a formula that worked. Everyone did yeah. it. And that's what YouTube is. A trend that works, cool. Everyone jumps on it, gets what they can from it and move on to something else. Some people stay in that, some people don't. And like I said, I don't want to fire shots at anyone. And I, I feel the same. Like, a lot of people are doing what worked for them, how they built their audience, and they continue to do that. I've got no issue with that. For me, it was like, what can I do that's different? What do I enjoy doing? I like trying to make it cinematic. I like trying to just get to the point. No one wants to see you showing like manuals. We know it comes with manuals, man. Like, no one cares because all they do is a top down. Here's the manuals, throw it off screen. So why did you show us? You're just going to throw them away anyway. <laughs> Don't talk about them. We know they come with them. Do you know what I mean? It's little things. I could rant for ages. And like I said, it's not directed at anyone individually. It's just as, as you said, people are getting bored of that style. And I know that some people are doing things slightly different. But for me, it was like, cool, if I just cut out all the crap that no one cares about, no one wants to see it comes with O-rings, unless it has a massive difference. And one thing I did leave out of my uh, Target PM80 review, which I actually completely forgot. It actually comes with rubber bungs to block the air holes. Completely forgot to talk about it. So that is my bad. But... Um, but I think it's having it, something different. Yeah, I think I think along with that, I mean, it sort of all had it sort of all happened at the same time. I mean, at least for yeah. me personally. Okay. You had the TPD coming out. Yeah. You vaping YouTube was becoming boring. Yeah. And all the devices that were coming out, there were no. It wasn't. This one's fucking shite. <laughs> this one's fucking amazing. It yeah. was. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. You know, it got to a point where the industry had sort of. Just got nailed, to plateau. It had like nailed how to make good stuff. Yeah, so it was not, like, yeah. all you heard from like YouTubers and stuff was, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Like I keep repeating yeah. myself, but that's what it got like. And it was like, I mean, I personally as well, like it was like, I sort of, I was like, yeah, I'm still going to vape and I'm still interested if something new comes out that's like, wow, that's cool. But it was like, I don't care anymore. You know, it was like, Give me a reason to tune in. Yeah, like, it was like give me a reason. Give to... me, like what is there out there right now that's not great? You know, it's, yeah, of course. It's... <laughs> I was actually looking for something that's shite. Do you know what I mean? Just to make to break. Yeah, that. literally, literally. Yeah, yeah. I get that. And I've, I've addressed this a few times. I've not done many reviews where things are bad. And like I said, it's a back catalogue. I'm genuinely reviewing stuff that I enjoy, and I always try to look at the good in things. And I will say, I've gone back on myself with the Inner Kingala trash kit. Don't ever get it. It wastes the money. Um, and there will be times where I've said to you guys, if you want to see me talk about a company that I don't like, but no issue, not slandering them, but going reason, through reasons why I don't like them. But it's bringing something different. And 
that's why I try and diversify what we do. A weekly podcast is vape related. Yeah. Get to meet like customers, friends, guests, talk about your vaping journey. I think people are interested in that. Yeah. A hardware review and a media review every week. I'm just trying to mix it up and just do it slightly different because I don't want to sound big headed when I say this. I really don't. I want to, I'm almost like a new generation of YouTube, of vaping YouTubers because I'm doing something that everyone's going, oh, this stuff's not like, no one does stuff like that. Mm. I'm not saying, oh, I'm the best. No way. But people are starting to go, Actually, I quite like that because you get the pan and shots, you get this, you get that. It just cuts with the crap. Oh, I, I do agree. Do you know it's mean? like other YouTubers have sort of, you know, like I, I was saying to you earlier before we even started this podcast, like Suck My Mods now, his reviews are more like podcasty sort of. Yeah, yeah. Just him being himself with his girlfriend, um, like just it's like trash adapting. talking and yeah, talking yeah. to each other and just like, and then in that, there's a review <coughs> or like yeah. an impressions video of a device or whatever or an e-liquid. You know, it's not like, here's a top-down view of this. It's more like him just having a laugh about with his missus and then, oh, we're trying out this today. It, You know, and yeah. obviously Sophie it's, sort of stopped with about... the vape stuff because she got hit hard by YouTube, I think, as well. And now I've she's doing more like lot, gaming more and stuff. I've active and... on Instagram as well. Mm. Um, <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, the, I think the caffeine's starting to wear off and my body's just slowly dying. Um... I think that's not just with our niche, it's with YouTube in general. The successful creators you see adapt. Every time there's a shift, yeah. they adapt. They change their content up, they change their style up. And I understand that um, for someone, oh, see, I don't want to name any names particularly, but I will, who cares, all right? Vapor Mavic, for example, he's got a massive following. Yeah. He's built that over a very, like, various amounts of years. And yes, he does do a lot of, he does a lot of live stream stuff, a lot of... Um, Long form content, right? That's, that's primarily what, that's where that's where Vape and Biker went as well, like live streams and stuff. Like and that. his stuff is good, and it it, it pleases his audience. I got no issue with that. Mm -hmm. If he did that for the next five years, would he have a big? Would he grow as much? I don't think so, because you've got to change as times change. Does that make sense? Rather than being stuck and go, I'm going to do the exact same style for the next five years. And I actually have this fear of my content. With what I'm doing, I'm already going. Oh, do I need to mix it up a little bit, or am I doing the right thing? Just need to keep going. Mm. But then I look at the other content creators go, they've been doing this for three, four, five years and they're still doing the same thing. They've still got a big audience and they're growing. So it's just trying to, trying to judge but that. I think as well, you've got like, do you want to grow? I think some of the bigger YouTubers are like, just they're happy like, where they're at. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. That's fair but enough. like to, to wrap, like to, to sort of tie it all in, it's like, you know, all the vaping stuff that was being released was good. Yeah, yeah. There was no really, really terrible stuff. You had a couple of companies sort of push in some weird sort of stuff. I mean, there was like the Pagoda tank, which I actually got a free review copy of myself. Oh, nice. And there was one which was like a spinning top with a tank you could use as like a spinning top, you know, and they were like, oh, okay. they were pretty bad. Right, okay. Um, and, you know, and Smoan, not to bash them because I fucking love their stuff, but it's like they had like a, a vape mod where you could put like, coca-cola in one side and your vape juice in the other and as you'd vape it you'd be like drinking coca-cola so the flavors mixed together uh, and it's yeah. like what yeah <laughs> that's mad yeah intuitive it, but uh but nice. like that's that's sort of what they've got to do now to sort of do something new because they've gotten to the point where it's like where do we yeah go? you know we've made that kit which sold millions of units well let's just keep incrementally improving that like like um i don't know like the vupu drag like the dragon and then the drag two and then they'll probably do a drag three or whatever um <clears throat> or the pod mod systems you know it's, yeah it's, it's like For me they found what they're good at and they'll just do that so it's nothing that's like mind-blowing comes out on the market anymore obviously geek vape had the agus which was like oh my god it's bomb proof yeah and i'll tell you what it sells very well because a lot of people that average consumers that aren't like people so that work in my field and stuff like that they as well, love like it. builders and because construction they workers. they are pretty much indestructible. People love that and that sell into a, to a market that no one else is doing. It's one of those things. It's like with pod mods, some people see it as like a cul-de-sac because mm. once you've done it, where'd you go? You put an external battery in it. Cool, where'd you go from there? Oh, Dual you battery. A, oh, you put an adapter in it so you can put any tank on it. Cool, where'd you go from there? But you can't. There's nowhere else to go. From exactly. That. So but it's like, is it going to die out? Very how quickly? many, how many ways are there to heat up a coil to vaporize a liquid and inhale it? Yeah. I mean, we started out with mouth to lung 
ego pens with uh, what were called, they weren't meshes or coils, they were... Like clearamizers? Yeah, like clearamizers yeah, with, yeah. with like the silicate... Little cotton bits. Yeah, they're like down, the little yeah. tail things. Then we went to but, tanks. Not to cut you off, but when we had those, people were going, where are they going to go from this? Because it was just That's so true. new. I mean, it's, now, so now it's like, you know, then it then went to sort of tanks, then it went to direct inhalation tanks, then it went to sub ohm then you started getting things like drippers and RDTAs because people were like, well, I want, don't want to keep putting juice yeah. in my dripper. So they made a dripper with a tank. And then it's like, and then from there you had better and better and incrementally better sub ohm tanks. And people were like, yeah, dripping's just annoying, whatever. And rebuildables are like annoying. And coils, as I said in the last podcast, coils got way better. Yeah. And then it's now onto pods and it's like, well, I do personally think like, where can they really go from that? It's like they've, how else can you heat up a coil to produce vapor and inhale it? Like how many different ways are there? Yeah, I see what you're saying. The only thing they can like do is like incrementally increase vapor production, incrementally increase flavor, uh, rec recreation. Durability of the coil. Durability yeah, of the coil. Yeah. It's just, yeah, like I said, like last time, it's like it's just incremental now. I don't think there's really anything they can do where it's like, holy shit, this is revolutionary. Just quickly. Personally, I mean, maybe you've got a different view on it. Well, personally, it's the same with any industry, right? You think about trainers or sneakers or wherever you're listening from or watching from, right? That's all marketing. A lot so why wouldn't it be the same for this industry? Because a shoe is a shoe. Once you make a shoe, that's it. But you still got Air Force Ones, you've got Reebok Classic. You, there's so many shoes and there's always new shoes coming out. Mm. And you are right, marketing comes from that angle. But essentially, how many times can you get fabric around your foot and it be different? And do, do, do you see what I mean? It's the same in any industry. So I personally believe that from where we've come from to now, unreal, genuinely, like we said, we've had a, a massive spike, not as much recently, but, you know, bits here and there. I don't think it'll ever get to the point where they go, oh, well, we completed it. And it'll always be something. Oh, yeah. Well, just... they'll, like, as with smartphones and stuff like that, it'll, you know, it'll keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more efficient and more power efficient, you know. And, you know, it might get to a point where you've got a vape that lasts a week. But do you think that it could and be... And it's like the size of your thumbnail or something <laughs> stupid, but... I'd be mad. It's literally just a fire button. It's like... <laughs> you know, I don't know, but... Do you think that for industries nowadays, not just this one, but globally... Uh, they have to go um, innovation for a year, new product, two to three years of increment incremental changes, and then, cool, something brand new. So they kind of go, here's something new, let's refine it, get it perfect for two years, and then boff, something brand new, and then take two years to refine it, then boff, rather than every year go, bang, this is new, this is new, this is new, this is new. Does that make sense? Yeah, I do get that. I mean, like again, like my, my thing at the moment is like smartphones. Yeah, like you said, incrementally every year they get better. But then it's all like of a now, go, now we're on like triple, quadruple cameras. And camera, that. like, and the software, like a lot of what's on a smartphone is now software. It's like, yep. who's got the better software? Because hardware wise, it's like how much, like how many more micrometers of bezel can we get rid of to put more screen on? You know, can yeah. we get like a 100% screen to body ratio? It's just like a phone that's all screen. Like, you know, and it's more cameras. I mean, Google did do something completely different with their project Soli, which is uh, essentially like a radar in the right. top of the phone. Okay. Which is like, if you've got your phone on your thing, you can just like use your hand. I'm sure you've seen the adverts on YouTube. They went heavy on the YouTube adverts with the Google Pixel 4. It's like you can oh, wave your hand yeah, over your yeah, phone yeah, yeah. to like get rid those. of calls and stuff. And they like I, I watched their keynote. And it was like, you know, the radar was like a meter wide machine, like a desktop PC. And we've managed to compress it down to like a chip that's like the size like that. That's mad. That's mad. But right, I think that is probably a nice place to wrap up this podcast. We've kind of gone all over the place. Yeah, um, like we did last really... time. It'll probably sound a lot more coherent on the rewatch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I sit there editing it, I just get drawn in and I'm like, oh, I want to listen to this. I mean, you might, might want to just wrap up like, you know, I mean, because do you really think personally that the vaping industry's got are they just going to keep pumping out products that they know will sell or will they manage to get somewhere where it's like hey this is innovative I, in innovative 
I look at Smock, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, cool. They released the alien kit, one of the first of its kind. Yeah. Got a massive worldwide, become a household name. Oh, yeah. In terms of marketing and things like that. Sold so many units. So what do they do? They went for quantity over quality. Did we know that works? Push out, push out, push out. Then they went, oh, the baby beast. People like that. So we'll make 15 different types of the baby beast and we'll change the course slightly. We'll make this and we'll do that and change the design. But essentially, it's the same tank. Yeah. Right? So I look at a company like that and then I look at someone like Geekbait. Yeah. And they've got a completely different route. Cool. We're going to make the, essentially the Nokia 3310 of vapes. <laughs> yeah. And see how we can adapt that into anyone's yeah. convenience. I then look at other companies like Aspire. They strive for flavor. They've got mouth to lung. They've got direct lung. And they're always constantly tweaking stuff to make it the best possible flavor that you can get from their products, right? You will. They went, cool, we'll do the flavor thing. Uh, we're going to try and be a bit more um, better with our materials and we're going to give you reinforced glass and go that sort of route, like trying to cover different things. Um, I think as an industry, we will always find something to do. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying otherwise, new. you know. I think, like I said, it's going to be one year where they release something groundbreaking maybe a year six months to what a year do you think of that could be? It. what going from now what what do you think oh, could be what, I mean, what, do you, knew, what do you think it would be if i knew i would be inventing it and be calling yeah companies. i know but i'm saying <laughs> like, i've got an idea where, right yeah uh wireless charging straight up wireless charging. oh yes i'd never i'd yeah. never thought of that yeah, yeah. Uh, imagine having i know you don't like them right but pod mod like that all right little pad buff wireless charge two amp fast charge on a pad why haven't been done yet there you go. Lap that up. That's just one idea for top That's of my head. for ones with built-in charging. batteries. I wouldn't recommend that for no, like no, the for ones with the external, external AE650s. You have external, external bay chargers for that, but yeah. anything built-in, buff, wireless charging pad. Do it with phones. Why don't we do it with vapes? That's, like, that is... You weren't expecting that, was you? <laughs> I didn't actually think of that. No, you're right. It's just something small, but there are, there's so many avenues we haven't gone. Like Tom is the best person to talk to about this. He comes out with so many random ideas that when you sit and think about it, you go, that makes so much sense. Why has it not been done? Well, there must be a reason why, but, you know, he's, he's your guy to talk to. Shout out to him. He always come out with ideas, man. Um, that's where I would personally go. Whether it's PodMod or whatever, anything that's inbuilt, wireless charging pad. That's the first thing I'd do. And if I see a company release a wireless charging pad without crediting me, I'm going to be pissed. Why don't you get in contact with them and say, hey, why haven't you done this yet? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you try and get someone that's in the industry because you've uh, obviously got contacts now. Why don't you say... Oh, I've got contacts. No, no, well, yeah, I'm well, going to say you, ha you have got contacts. I know a few people. but You just say like, what, what's going on? Why haven't you... Is it just not feasible? Why don't you ask them? Yeah, That'd be a really it, interesting video. Yeah, to be fair, it is a conversation I should really be having. Uh, I don't know. That's just where I would go. I mean, cool. They're now compact and if they're focused... But that on, would mean that they'd have to have... Because wireless, like with, with phones and stuff, it doesn't work with plastic or metal backs. It's only when they're glass backed. Oh, true. That may be why then. Because they don't want to make a vape. You have a glass, yeah. glass based vape. <laughs> sure, yeah, but surely they could get around it with like a Pyrex rubber, not rubberized, but like a, a clear plastic that's not as thick, similar sort of I don't know. I mean, a lot glass. of phones nowadays know. use glass because it, it does Go allow it. Yeah. Through, yeah. But I mean, with a pod mod, it wouldn't. You know, a tiny little yeah. bit on the bottom or whatever. It's just an option. It's a thought. Um, but yeah, it would be an interesting conversation to have. I might see if anyone's interested. Mm -mm. If they are, let me know. It'd be great. But that's what I, I think it's little things. It's for some people might. It's also perspective. I look at that and go, it's pretty cool. Like a lot of people go, that's groundbreaking. Some people go, it's incremental. Mm. It kind of depends where you're at. I just think what people, what companies are focusing on now, is compact and convenient. Yeah, and that is it. It's not about cloud chasing anymore. It's all about flavor. So it tastes good. It's convenient. It's compact. I think what, what they might also do, I think what the, what they might do as well is try and make recyclable or compostable coils, pods. Big advocate for that. The one downside to pods, um, refillable or not, the one downside that for me personally is the amount of waste. I genuinely would love to have either recyclable pods. I know it becomes a bit of a gray area because you've got nicotine, which is a toxic substance. I get that. That they might, or a biodegradable pod or something that can just be a bit less wasteful. And that's not a dig at companies, it's just how it is. Do you know what I mean? That's where we're at. We've got it as small as we can and to capacity. But uh, yeah, biodegradable, recyclable things be great. 
and it has to yeah again more environmentally friendly then that might that might mean moving away from having metal coils and something else that's conductive but can be recycled because i mean they did try ceramic coils at once and i've seen yeah. people make uh, coils out of quartz Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's more of the diy like you I get like imagine. a chunk of quartz crystal and wrap like something around it and it heats the quartz crystal that's mad <laughs> that's you know, probably i think probably... there are avenues they can go down yeah. it's just who's going to come up with the right idea that's one going to be cost effective mm. and perform how they want it to and then market it as well so it's also very gray in this industry of how you can market because smoking laws etc but yeah exactly I don't know. They will always come out with something. No one thought pod mods were going to be around. And all of a sudden, buff, every, every company's got a pod mod now. They try and put their own spin on it. Uh. And what we have noticed is from pod systems to pod mods is they've gone, cool, rather than restricting this to mouth to lung, it's just create a device that does both. It's convenient. Mm. You can direct lung or mouth to lung. The choice is yours. It's lower wattage. Yeah. Um, most of the coils you get from are all mesh. So we've got a, a decent standard of flavor. So there are ways of going around it. It's just knowing... Who's going to be brave enough to, to try something new? Personally, wireless charging pad, that is what I'm going to go for. Um, I'd love to be able to do that. It'd be so cool, wouldn't it? It'd be so cool. If I knew how to do one to make a prototype. If they could make it work. work with external batteries as well, just like, bonk, oh, it'd be done. so cool. Or even like a docking station that's safe, that acts as an external battery charger for the devices, but it actually is a holder for your device as well. Do you know what I mean? So you just clip it in, safely charges it like an external bay. Mm. This, rather than you having the pull the prongs down, fit it in, it's like the device just clips in. Like you know, you undo the battery flap and the battery sits on an actual pad, as it would. And mm. clip, I don't know, but there are. I mean, I suppose we've we've opened up a bit of a guys, can of worms. Yeah, we have to be fair. If you guys got any ideas, leave a comment down below because I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. This is. I apologise for anyone who's trying to make a coherent conversation out of this, because I'm ill. I have no idea what we've been talking about really. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm kind of living in the moment right now. Yeah, I think, I think if we keep talking, I think we're going to end up like, what the hell were we talking about? Yeah. Where's this going? So, I think we better wrap it up I think it is before, a nice... we, before, we, uh, before we end up just going round and round and round in circles. I think the beds are starting to wear off and my head is hurting. Uh, <laughs> plus, I have to edit this tonight. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming on, man. I really no appreciate problem. it. It's been a really good chat. As I said, if you uh, want me on, just con. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's fine. I'll, uh, I'll bear that in mind, especially we've got You've opened up a can of worms now. There's a few things I think we could probably potentially talk about a bit more often as well now. So that'd be interesting. Um, once I actually get a U USB interface, I can have more guests on as well. Because uh, at the moment, I've only got two ports. So I actually well, have three What you really want is like a full XLR setup. Yeah, I know. Like multiple inputs and then like I a, could do da that. a DAC and then a microphone channel. Sort of, and then, I mean, you know, yeah, we scale at uh, camera you know. lighting. <laughs> I'm trying, all right. I'm just on a budget. <laughs> um, we've got a starter camera, a wide angle lens, some lighting, and two USB mics. That's that worked well so far, exactly. So, thank you guys so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys did enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And with notifications turned on if you haven't already, I'm that ill, I can't remember my outro. Um, yeah, thank you again for coming on. I've probably thanked you like 15 times. <laughs> and lastly, I spoke to you guys last week. You've been very, very supportive and you suggested that we create a Patreon. So if you do want to support the channel through the Patreon, there is a link in the description. It'll be on the screen. Any donation or subscription is hugely appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to see my daily Instagram stories, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, again, it's on the screen in the description. You, in the last few days, you've seen some weird stuff because I've just been really ill and trying not to die. Other than that, guys, I shall see you in the next video. Peace.